Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company was an American aircraft manufacturer formed in 1916 by Glenn Hammond Curtis. After significant commercial success in the teens and twenties, it merged with the Wright Aeronautical in 1929 to form Curtis Wright Corporation. Topic: History. In 1907, Glenn Curtis was recruited by the scientist Dr. Alexander Graham Bell, to be among the founding members of Bell's Aerial Experimental Association AEA, with the purpose of helping establish an aeronautical research and development organization. According to Bell, it was a cooperative scientific association, not for gain but for the love of the art and doing what we can to help one another. In 1909, the AEA was disbanded and Curtis formed the Herring Curtis Company with Augustus Moore Herring on March 20, 1909, which was renamed the Curtis Aeroplane Company in 1910. <laughs> Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company The Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company was created on January 13, 1916 from the Curtis Aeroplane Company of Hammondsport, New York and Curtis Motor Company of Bath, New York. Burgess Company of Marblehead, Massachusetts, became a subsidiary in February 1916. With the onset of World War I, military orders rose sharply, and Curtis needed to expand quickly. In 1916, the company moved its headquarters and most manufacturing activities to Buffalo, New York, where there was far greater access to transportation, manpower, manufacturing expertise, and much-needed capital. The company housed an aircraft engine factory in the former Taylor Signal Company General Railway Signal Company. An ancillary operation was begun in Toronto, Ontario that was involved in both production and training, setting up the first flying school in Canada in 1915. In 1917, the two major aircraft patent holders, the Wright Company and the Curtis Company, had effectively blocked the building of new airplanes, which were desperately needed as the United States was entering World War I. The U.S. government, as a result of a recommendation of a committee formed by Franklin D. Roosevelt, then Assistant Secretary of the Navy, pressured the industry to form a cross-licensing organization in other terms a patent pool, the Manufacturers Aircraft Association. Curtis was instrumental in the development of U.S. naval aviation by providing training for pilots and providing aircraft. The first major order was for 144 various subtypes of the Model F trainer flying boat. In 1914, Curtis had lured B. Douglas Thomas from Sopwith to design the Model J trainer, which led to the JN4 two-seat biplane trainer known affectionately as the Jenny. The Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company worked with the United States British and Canadian allies, resulting in JN4 Ken trainers nicknamed the Canuck, being built in Canada. In order to complete large military orders, JN4 production was distributed to five other manufacturers. After the war, large numbers of JN-4s were sold as surplus, making influential as the first plane for many interwar pilots, including Amelia Earhart. A stamp was printed to commemorate the Curtis JN-4, however a printing error resulted in some having the aircraft image inverted, which has become very valuable, and one of the best-known rare stamps, even being featured in a number of movies. The Curtis HS-2L flying boat was used extensively in the war for anti-submarine patrols and was operated from bases in Nova Scotia, Canada, France and Portugal. The John Cyril Port of the Royal Navy and Curtis worked together to improve the design of the Curtis flying boats resulting in the Curtis F-5L and the similar Felixstowe F.3. Curtis also worked with the U.S. Navy to develop the NC-4, which became the first aircraft to fly across the Atlantic Ocean in 1919, making several stops en route. 
By the end of World War I, the Curtiss Aeroplane and Motor Company would claim to be the largest aircraft manufacturer in the world, employing 18,000 in Buffalo and 3,000 in Hammondsport, New York. Curtiss produced 10,000 aircraft during that war, and more than 100 in a single week. Peace brought cancellation of wartime contracts. In September 1920, the Curtiss Aeroplane and Motor Company underwent a financial reorganization and Glenn Curtiss cashed out his stock in the company for $32 million and retired to Florida. He continued as a director of the company but served only as an advisor on design. Clement M. Keyes gained control of the company and it later became the nucleus of a large group of aviation companies. Curtis Seaplanes won the Schneider Cup in two consecutive races, those of 1923 and 1925. The 1923 race was won by U.S. Navy Lieutenant David Rittenhouse flying a Curtis CR-3 to 177.266 miles per hour, 285.282 kilometers per hour. Piloted by U.S. Army Lieutenant Cyrus K. Bettis, a Curtis R-3C won the Pulitzer Trophy race on October 12, 1925, at a speed of 248.9 miles per hour 400.6 kilometers per hour. Thirteen days later, Jimmy Doolittle won the Schneider Trophy in the same aircraft fitted with floats with a top speed of 232.573 miles per hour 374.290 kilometers per hour. The Curtis Robin light transport was first flown in 1928, becoming one of the company's biggest sellers during the Great Depression, and the 769 built helped keep the company solvent when orders for military aircraft were hard to find. Topic: <laughs> Curtis Wright Corporation. On July 5, 1929, Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company together with 11 other Wright and Curtis affiliated companies merged to become the Curtis Wright Corporation. One of the last projects started by Curtis Aeroplane was the ambitious Curtis Bleecker SX-51 helicopter, a design that had propellers located midpoint on each of the four large rotors that drove the main rotors. The design, while costly and well-engineered, was a failure. Topic. Curtis Aviation School Curtis also operated a flying school at Long Branch Aerodrome in Toronto Township, Ontario from 1915 to 1917 before being taken over by the Royal Flying Corps Canada. Atlantic Coast Aeronautical Station Glenn H. Curtis sponsored the Atlantic Coast Aeronautical Station on a 20-acre tract east of Newport News Virginia Boat Harbor in the fall of 1915 with Captain Thomas Scott Baldwin as head. Many civilian students, including Canadians, later became famed World War I flyers. Victor Karlstrom, Vernon Castle, Eddie Stinson and General Billy Mitchell trained here. The school was disbanded in 1922. Topic. Products Topic. Aircraft Topic. Other types of aircraft AEA June Bug Felixstowe F-5L Naval Aircraft Factory TS Orenco D Fitzner Flyer Topic. Aircraft engines Topic. Helicopters 
Curtis Bleeker SX-51 helicopter. Topic. See also Alfred V. Verville